All right, I gotta tell you the good thing about this attic is it's the same temperature in here as it is inside the upstairs. Like I said, they've got that little butterfly damper that bleeds off. They've got all this sealed and finished in, so uh, whenever this thing comes on and runs, that static opens up that butterfly damper. You get a little bit of airflow in here. see I've got the umbrella up starting to get some rain and drizzle and it's about 4:45 Wednesday afternoon so we're starting to get some of the outer edges of Hurricane Idalia which is going to be cutting south of us back out across the South Carolina North Carolina border back out in the Atlantic but we're I uh, hadn't gotten to that point yet, but we're starting to get the northern edge of it stretching out and giving us a little rain. Tomorrow we're supposed to get maybe where we are two to three inches of rain at best. Maybe some 20, 30 mile an hour wind gusts, some tropical kind of low level winds, nothing, nothing major, nothing like what they're dealing with in Florida. So I hope everybody down there is doing, doing okay and uh, hopefully the loss and damages will be to a minimum but uh with that said we're working on a kind of carrier infinity here probably not going to be a very long video i'm just doing a follow-up <coughs> behind another technician that was here surprisingly we installed this uh quite disappointed that we would have installed a carrier infinity system but evidently we did some time back I'm uh, kind of glad we've come to our senses on that. That would have been 2012. So that would have been 11 years ago. We have been 100% trained since about 2013. So, yeah, we all make mistakes, guys. This was one of ours. Anyway, <laughs> just joking. I'm not a fan of carrier products. So especially the Infinity, don't see a lot of them, so they're a little bit of a head scratcher when I do run up on one. But uh, original complaint was she was up there, she's got, you saw the intro, the basically conditioned attic space, sealed off storage area, air handlers in there. It's got a little butterfly damper when the unit runs, it feeds heated and cooled conditioned air into that space. Um, so, said that she'd went up there and seen a little water in the pan under it and noticed that the suction line or the refrigerant line she called it was was white and frosted so she turned it off another guy came out one of our younger techs uh, little you know good some experience but hadn't been around long enough to see one of these yet so uh, I told him just I'll come back I, I kind of helped him out over the phone with what I thought it was but I wanted to come back and double check it just to be sure myself. And uh, so we're running a 109 and a 280 with a one degree subcooling and a 12 degree superheat. Um, this thing just ramped up into its next stage. And now my superheat is starting to drop. Now it's down to what you can see there, which is we're running about a two degree superheat and a one degree subcooling. So I'm pretty sure we got a metering device problem up there. Uh, I just wanted to kind of see it for myself, um, lay some eyes on it. We'll go up in the attic. Hopefully I can see what these pressures do, see if they react to anything I do with that bulb and uh, kind of confirm that. But, uh, yeah, Carrier Infinity. Got that big thing in it. And they still use capacitors. And train does not. But uh, this is not really an inverter so much as it is a, a, a two-stage 
unit basically but uh it's not an inverter it's got one of those in it obviously but uh, it's kind of like carrier's early shots at you know their infinity system and kind of getting on the bandwagon with everything it's kind of like the beginning of where it all kind of started at i guess with some of this stuff i don't know i hadn't seen enough of these over time but anyway let's go up in the attic and see what that txv is doing so you see we're running about a 1.4 1.8 superheat and about a 0.5 subcooling <clears throat> we've got three zones on this carrier zoning one two there's another one second floor bonus room third floor office so I wanted to get in here and try to warm this bulb up, but it's got that original strap on it, and I don't have any more. And you've got to be able to secure that thing. So I'm not really going to be able to take it off and put it in my hand. Because it's got that little metal strap on it right there. And I don't have any additional straps. I usually have <clears throat> three or four of those train TXV clips. But I'm out for right now. That thing is on there tight, which it should be. So I don't know if I can get my enough heat on it with my fingers. I'll try to see if it'll do anything. It should open up. If it gets warm enough, start pushing more refrigerant through this thing. what little bit of heat I am giving it as you can see it's not responding it's still 1.8 1.5 superheat and 0.5 subcool 119 over 277 well, I mean that's my hands are, are warm and I'm rubbing on that TXV trying to put some heat in it to see if it'll open up any which I mean it's at 1.5 degrees of superheat. I don't know how much more open it can be, to be honest. It's almost completely flooding. But it's on a it's on a cold line. So it should be in theory throttling back and reducing my refrigerant flow. Because that line's getting cold. I'm getting a little bit of bypass air in here. So not all the air is going through that coil, so the pressure should be dropping in it. We've got a 41 degree saturation temperature on the coil. I'm going to open this thing up and just let this air bypass. Watch out for the UV light. Don't look at it. I'm doing my best not to look at it. But uh, I'm going to block it with my hand, but I'm going to let this thing run. Let this pipe get real cold. And in theory, if it senses, that bulb starts to sense this coil freezing, which is getting pretty damn cold, it should be cutting back my refrigerant flow. Now my suction pressure has dropped down from 120 to 111. It seems to be trying to cut back a little bit. And in this situation, with this door off, a low superheat would be normal, because I'm no airflow in it. I'm flooding with liquid at that point. When I put this thing back on, get that air back through that coil. You see the suction pressure start to go up a little bit. But that now I'm at a negative superheat. But that superheat should start to go up. Now I'm back up to a 120. One, 123. So it's sensing. Seems like it's trying to open up a little bit, or, or shut or shut down a little bit and reduce that refrigerant flow in that coil. To keep it from freezing. And that's what the bulb does on a TXV. It senses that line temperature. If it starts getting real cold, <clears throat> it should start to throttle that TXV 
closed to reduce refrigerant flow and it doesn't appear to be doing that because I'm still hovering at that one degree one degree superheat let me warm it up again real quick and see what happens and I'm trying to keep part of this block to keep as much airflow through that coil as I, as I can put this piece of plastic over well, it doesn't move. It's going to try to cover something right here, but I should be able to get my hand in there on that thing for a little bit. Warm it up. And around it real good. If I squeeze on it, it's still touching that line, but if the majority of it is on my hand, that should be sensing a change in heat load on that line. Should want to open up, let a little bit more refrigerant in there. And it's not not doing anything, it's staying right there one degree one degree superheat one degree subcool or half degree subcool so you can see it right there now it's down to yeah one degree superheat one degree subcool so I guess we got a TXV deal so So guys, just for giggles and grins, I came out here and added probably about 8 to 12 ounces of refrigerant. It did not change anything in the system whatsoever. Superheat stayed at 2, which, what would you expect, right? Sometimes I'll do that just to double check, just, just to see how it reacts to getting some, some charge put in it. But uh, you got... Two degree superheat, two degree subcool. One's telling you it's overcharged, one's telling you it's undercharged. You got a TXV bulb that's not not responding to heat. So carry your TXV. It is, guys. Thanks for watching. Guys, stay safe. Everybody getting uh, rained on and down there in the, in the storm. Hope everything turns out okay for you. Uh, see you on the next one. Like, subscribe.